to be up on you today our topic is computer abstractions and technology uh, and the main topic the subject is computer architecture so there are lots of stuff to discuss here but I'm going to go through some, some major stuff and I will not take much time discussing them rather I will try to show you those things and those formulas or you can say those equations so that you can get some good grades in the exam and understand the basics of it. So I'm going to go to uh, skip a lot of slides, and I will start from this place. So we did programming, and probably if you're learning this by now, you have all you already know about programming language and everything else. But now we will know that okay, the programming language we do is actually the high level language as you can see over here, right? In high written in high level language. But that high level language is then converted into system language or assembly language you can say. And then that assembly language goes to those binary language that means you know zero one. That's all. So you can divide it into three parts. The application software part, which is actually the front end or what we are doing now, the fact that you're watching a video in your computer probably, is the application software part. And if you consider a specific program, then you can still call it the application software part, which is written in high level language. System software, the compiler is the first system software that translates your understandable human language or you can say high level high level language and then converts it into machine code in two steps and the operating system is the OS you probably know about that and that's a separate topic itself a separate subject even but for now we'll just know that operating system does a lot of things including handling inputs and outputs managing the memory and storage where to use them when to use them how to use them and scheduling tasks and sharing resources it has a lot of responsibilities and depending on how it uses these things your performance shows something you know so hardware and we all know what hardware is each of these are topic by itself for example if you take a course on programming language that would be this part this course and many other courses like microprocessors and stuff like that is related to this part and the operating system is also a separate course by itself and the hardware would be like courses like for if you're from Bragg then it would be CSE 250 to 51 and if you're from any other place then it would be hardware courses like digital circuits stuff like that even processors so let's move on and I already mentioned that there are three steps for example this is a C code you know that uh, C language which is the initial of C++ and the C code is the high level language it is understandable by us and it is easy to write and then the compiler what it does is it converts it into assembly language which we will see in this course actually we'll try to go through assembly language uh, MIPS million instructions per second actually millions of instructions per second and then that code again is uh, you by an assembler it is converted into binary machine language which is nothing but zeros and ones so that's the basic of it as for the programming language and the uh, outfit of it and then we will go to this part data path we will learn about it control sequences data path something that is used to control we will learn about it too because these are some puzzles that will come together at the end of the day because this is a separate topic this is also a separate topic cache memory which is also a separate topic small fast SRAM you probably know about that already but still we will discuss these topics in detail separately so for now I'll just go through them and please remember these terms the abstraction abstraction helps us to deal with complexity that means height lower level detail Instruction set architecture ISA you will hear that a lot. This is actually the interface of hard between hardware and software Application binary interface. It's more than the ISA and Nothing much important here. This is a definition of computer architecture just in case you need it and This would be the definition of an ISA. I'm going to skip them for now because we need to sort these puzzles later 
when we will discuss it, these things in detail then everything will come together and the puzzles will be solved for now just get used to the terms and data path also just a data path I need to mention something about the data but that uh, a data path is a collection of functional units that means it can do a lot of things to be uh, to keep it simple that is that's all we need to know for now and the memory hierarchy okay we'll s we can spend some time here because probably you already know about this stuff there are different types of memory and they have different sizes they have different speed and depending on their size speed and cost there's a hierarchy and we will have <laughs> once again I'll t I'm telling you that this is a separate topic so I'll not go in details about this okay here we are starting our stuff a multiprocessor is a tightly computed couple sorry not computed coupled computer system having two or more processors multiprocessor that means more than one processor simple as that you have to remember this figure it can appear in your exam so you have this processor 1, processor 2, processor 3, processor 4 all of them have their own cache in on chip cache and then there's a separate cache L2 cache for each of them and the real memory and the input and output devices or operating system stuff you know so please remember this figure it is important role of the computer architect well I don't think I should mention about this but here goes look backward you have to think about what existed and exists so that you can understand okay so these are the positive things and these are the negative things this is my capabilities look forward okay what can I create what new can I bring what improvement can I do that is simply that look up uh, look up is kinda like okay these are the problems how can I solve this how, what important things can I bring or maybe this is not considered a problem but actually this is a problem and if there is a way to solve it then how can I solve it and look down would be looking at your technology okay I have all these solutions but my technology or the device circuit that I need is very costly or defective or not efficient what can I do about it these are the stuff so we will go through these and until I reach a point where we can discuss relative performance this is an important thing well we define performance one by execution time execution time means the time required to execute one single task and if you have two of them for example for X computer and performance of X and execution time of X and performance of y and execution time of y this would be the equation performance of x divided by performance of y equal to execution of y divided by execution of x okay so just keep uh, this equation and here is a real time example for example it requires 10 seconds on a and 50 seconds on b so the performance would be y by x and so you get 1.5 who is 1.5 faster a is 1.5 faster because it only requires 10 seconds that's how you calculate that a minor thing but it appears in the exam so okay clock cycle is an important term that we will need and clock period is uh, divided into something called picoseconds so you can see that it's into 10 to the power minus 12 so clock cycle is one uh, one clock cycle is instructed to one t okay you know what we'll discuss that as soon as we get to this topic this is a very important term so you'll get used to it anyway so CPU time CPU clock cycles I told you that there are clock cycles for tasks so suppose one task requires one clock cycle for now let's just assume that one task requires one instruction not task one instruction requires one clock cycle and the clock cycle time it has its own time so we'll remember that as well and if you multiply both of these then you will get the CPU time and you can also divide clock, uh, clock cycle time into clock cycle uh, one by clock rate I don't I know it's very confusing right now don't bother about it just write the formula down and the puzzles will come together here is a good example for example you have computer A which has a 2 gigahertz clock and its CPU time is 10 seconds so designing computer B 
now look this we uh, now I want to design a computer B which will be 6 second secure time here it is 10 so I want to change the 10 into 6 that means I want to increase its speed and if I do that then if you divide 10 by 6 I'll, I will require uh, 1 by 2 times as many clock cycles as computer A so the number of clock cycles available here must be increased so clock rate of B is clock cycles divided by CPU time so clock I already told you that we need 1 into 2 times clock cycles so you have to have that much clock cycles and CPU time we already know that we are aiming for 6 seconds so if you do that then it's done and for clock cycle A how do you measure clock cycle A 10 seconds this is the CPU time 2 gigahertz is the speed we have that formula over here and we saw that in the last slide so it's easy to get 20 to 10 to the power 9 but now we'll see the clock rate of B because clock cycle is of A is the same and I need to increase it by 1.2 fold so 1.2 into clock cycle numbers of A and also my CPU time needs to change to 6 and so I need 4 gigahertz the speed will be 4 gigahertz you know so that's how amazing it will become if you just increase the clock cycles into 1.2 this is another formula uh, which is very similar and uh, we will see direct implementation of the instruction count is one instruction CPI stands for cycles per instruction and clock cycle time is clock cycle time clock rate we already did that I think it will be better if we go through the examples and then it will be clear about it here is another one cycle time is 250 picosecond and clock cycles per instruction is 2.0 and cycle time is for B is 500 which is obviously more and the CPI is 1.2 the ISA is same so which is faster now let's have the formula instruction count where well, we have instructions one uh, 1.2 into uh, sorry no there is no there's only one instruction they're counting it for one instruction so instruction count for now we are assuming that there is one instruction so it's one 2.0 is the CPI of a and 250 so 1 into 500 because second if you have two instructions it will be 2 into 500 PS now for B same thing same speed 500 but it is longer because it has a cycle time of 500 PS and as you can see which it becomes 1 into 600 that is 100 P is less than or more than CPU A and if you divide those two then CPU A is actually 1.2 times faster so this slide is very important you you might want to take note of this slide by pausing the video okay and this is uh, there is always there is never a chance where you have one instruction in a computer so this formula is just here to add them up and the same formula again okay I think I have to jump to something that requires more attention please take a note of this formula just in case you need it this is actually for power benchmark so you have performance this will be given to you and all you need to know is that you have to divide it by power for example you have the performance figures and you have the power figures all you have to do is add all of them and then divide the performance by the power easy easy very important thing Amjahol's law well I don't know how his name is spelled though and T improved is T is standing here for time and we're going to get to another formula of improvement and time and stuff like that you know T affected and here's a live example of it how look at the example multiply accounts for 80 seconds by 100 seconds how much improvement in multiply performance to get overall five times so 100 seconds right so we'll have to divide 100 by how many times five times 100 by 5 gives you 20 very well 80 divided by n that is the time we already have so nothing to ask about that and plus t unaffected how much is unaffected 
uh, total is 100 and then we have 80 so 100 minus 80 gives you 20 that's the unaffected part so the improved part would be the expected part by the expected performance time which gives you 20 and this is different this is the unaffected part because the affected is 80 and the total is 100 so the unaffected part is 20 don't confuse these two as the same okay and by the way as we can see that this is not possible you cannot give a five times in this case but there will be cases where it will be possible so remember this formula okay here we have heard about the topic MIPS and now we're going to talk about it uh, actually not going to we're not going to talk about it we'll actually know about it and now we'll get introduced to two types of architectures and end this session the first is the von Neumann model or architecture now you need to remember some key facts and then you're done about this topic this architecture has a single memory unified between instructions and data and one more thing you need to remember about this is one instruction processed this is very important now one instruction processed at a time it cannot do multiple instructions at a time this is one key point and the second one I mentioned is memory unified between instructions and data so you can understand that it is unified between one single memory you can understand that well when you see the other architecture another thing is that instructions stored in a linear memory array keep that in mind too and sequential instruction processing so that is why that means since it does one and then again another and again another again another so it does it sequentially and this is the figure of it you can see one memory for memory address register and data register and you have processing unit ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit you need to know you don't need to know about that actually you don't know about that if you see the review of digital logic design uh, I have uploaded those videos you know that ALU is arithmetic logic unit temp is the temp and output in instruction register all of this stuff are there okay so that's von Neumann model and then you have the Harvard model one of the major differences here is the memory is different for data and instruction this is one of the major differences also it can read and write at the same time not to mention that it is faster because it can run multiple instructions so that's more or less it and this is the figure there's nothing to discuss about it all you need to know is just uh, you need to know about that that's all and one more thing is uh, the differences between RISC and CISC well you know what this is not so important but you can still see them so that's all for this I had to skip a lot of stuff because those are not actually important but you can still find this slide on the folder and you can check them out it's very easy actually nothing to discuss I just go went through the important highlights of this chapter and inshallah next time we'll be dealing with MIPS millions of instructions per second which is the big deal until then see ya